Welcome to Coventor's MEMS Plus 3.0 instructional video series. MEMS Plus is Coventor's unified MEMS and integrated circuit 3D design and simulation environment. In this installment, we will examine the Wizard, an innovator feature available in MEMS Plus 3.0. The Wizard is a unique tool which ensures that your MEMS design is configured correctly for simulation in any of the solvers that MEMS Plus is designed to interface with including the simulator plugin, as well as third-party solvers such as Cadence Spectre and APS, MATLAB, and MATLAB Simulink. The wizard replaces the need to manually connect adjacent components together and automates the task of computing simulation scale factors and assigning boundary conditions to a single click. In this demo, we will illustrate the capabilities of the wizard using the MEMS Plus RF Switch tutorial model. After constructing models consisting of multiple components, adjacent components must be connected together appropriately to ensure consistent mechanical, electrical, and fluidic definition across the device for simulation. We highlight the anchor, actuation pad, separation beam, and tip beam components that are used to construct the RF switch. Switching from component viewing mode to mechanical viewing mode, we note that all mechanical connectors are disconnected from each other as evidenced by their orange color. In electrical viewing mode, we take notice of the single electrical connector which has been manually grounded as shown in gray. All other electrical connectors are displayed in orange, characteristic of disconnected electrical connectors. And finally, in fluidic connector mode, we see that all the fluidic pins are disconnected, as evidenced, again, by their orange color. We return to mechanical mode, and we are now ready to employ the wizard designated by this icon. The effect of the wizard is immediately visible. The mechanical connector at the far end of the cantilevered structure is now shown in gray. Expanding the properties of the mechanical connector, we see that all degrees of freedoms are now fixed. The mechanical connector now highlighted is green, designating that the mechanical connectors of two adjacent components have now been linked together, as evidenced in the mechanical connectors tree. In electrical viewing mode, we see the electrical connectivity of the device established by the wizard as determined by the component hierarchy and material properties. Our manually grounded electrical connector remains grounded, and the only electrical connectors to be combined, as shown in green, are the two electrical pins of the tip beam. Tip beam is the parent component to both transmission line electrodes. Thus, while the individual underlying electrodes remain disconnected, since they share the same parent, the electrical pins of the beam parent are appropriately connected. In fluidic connector mode, we are able to visualize the connection of coincident fluidic pins within the array created by the adjacent components. The highlighted fluidic connector is expanded to show that coincident fluidic pins from the actuation pad and separation beam components have been linked together. Beyond linking coincident connectors together, the wizard can also be used to compute appropriate unit scale factors. Unit scale factors are internal scaling coefficients used to condition MEMS Plus models for simulation in external third-party solvers. The coefficients establish reasonable scaling between mechanical quantities such as forces, accelerations, and displacements, and electrical solver quantities such as voltage and current based on the expected maximum displacement of the device which can be configured. These dialogues are right-click menu options of the components tree. The model is now properly conditioned for simulation and we would need only to expose the desired mechanical or electrical connectors to apply motive forces in subsequent solvers. In order to further illustrate the ease at which designs can be modified in MEMS Plus, we will modify our design to increase the number of mechanical connectors as might be required to capture the influence of higher order mode shapes and allow the wizard to automatically reconfigure our model for simulation. In mechanical connector mode, we again highlight this mechanical connector shared between the anchor and actuation pad components. 
The mechanical properties confirm that this connector is not exposed. We highlight these three components in the model by multi-selection. In the properties dialog, we can change the finite element model from Timoshenko beam to shell element for all selected components simultaneously. The default number of nodes along the length and width is three. The model reflects the change in finite element type immediately, as shown by the increase in the number of mechanical connectors. We run the wizard on this model. The connectors are automatically modified appropriately. The mechanical connector along the fixed end of the cantilever remains gray, indicating that it remains fixed, despite the change in finite element scheme for the rest of the device. This is confirmed in the properties dialog. This fixed condition is applied automatically by the wizard because of the face type boundary condition set in the anchor properties dialog. A boundary condition of fixed is assigned to the face associated with end one. We return once more to the mechanical connector shared between the anchor and actuation pad components. Despite the change in the finite element model type of the actuation pad, the wizard appropriately links the coincident mechanical connector shared by the Timoshenko anchor and shell element actuation pad. Another feature of the wizard can be seen by opening the properties of a random mechanical connector of the shell. The wizard will fix unnecessary degrees of freedom when appropriate. Unlike the Timoshenko beam element, the shell element does not require a rotation about Z degree of freedom, and so that redundant degree of freedom is automatically fixed by the wizard. A final feature associated with the wizard can be illustrated by manually connecting the three mechanical connectors at the free end of the device. After manually linking these connectors, we run the wizard to show that the wizard will, by default, honor manual connection schemes. For the purposes of this demonstration, we now fix the near end of the beam, converting our cantilevered structure into a fixed fixed structure. The properties of the mechanical connector reveal that the user-defined checkbox is now checked, reflecting that we have made a manual change by fixing the degrees of freedom. When we run the wizard one final time, our manually assigned boundary condition is not modified because the user-defined setting shields that connection from the wizard actions. However, the actions of the wizard can be tailored. The settings for the wizard can be found using the document properties icon. Here, the default settings for the wizard actions can be viewed and adjusted. In this installment, we have demonstrated the wizard's ability to automatically connect mechanical, electrical and fluidic connectors, apply boundary conditions as specified by face conditions, fix unnecessary mechanical degrees of freedom depending on finite element model, as well as set appropriate unit scale factors for exporting the model to external solvers. We hope you have enjoyed this demonstration and will join us for other instructional videos.